If you're like me and want a bar of gold, but maybe a few million short, easy peasy. Here's what you're gonna need. Some air drying clay, few different types of gold paint, baking paper, PVA glue, some liquid starch, a bowl, some measuring cups, scissors, tape, some water, spoons, paintbrush, a scratchy tool, a wire tool, a damp cloth, and an old bench just so we can paint on. Okay, so the first step, we're just gonna take these aside for the moment and get our baking paper. Going to lay this out on the bench and get our tape. Stick some down, make sure it's really tight. The air drying clay, when you're not using it, make sure it is wrapped up because as soon as it is exposed to air, it will start to dry. So I'm just gonna pick it up now and start bending it with my hands and this is going to soften it up just so it makes it a bit easier to mould and to work with. We want to get it into a rectangle shape because this is going to be our bar of gold. So you want to hit it down on the table and this gives a really nice flat edge. And if you keep doing that all over, that's the easiest way to try and get it into a rectangle. Once you're kind of happy with the shape, we're actually going to grab our wire tool if you don't have one of these, it's really easy to just replace it with a butter knife. Cut an angle out and take this edge off. So as you can see, we've got a bit of a slant along this edge. We're just going to now do the exact same thing to the other side and on the edges as well. Get a bit of water at this point, dip your fingers in so it's a bit damp and run it along the edges. So we're just going to do the exact same thing to all the other edges. There we go. Once you're really happy with how the shape looks, you can then get your wire again. Just going to slice it in half. So now we're going to get our scratchy tool or your butter knife again. Really, it doesn't matter. Even a sharp pencil could do the trick. We're going to get it and we're going to cut inside here so once you've got that as a frame, we're going to stick it all the way in deeper and deeper until we can take out all that clay in the middle there. This part does take a little bit of time and it's also really important that you don't bend the outside of the clay out of shape. So you do have to be a little bit patient with this, but this is where our liquid gold is going to sit. So it's really important you get it all out. I'm really happy with that, so I'm just gonna do the exact same thing to the other side now. So now we've got them both hollowed out, I'm just going to press them together again, make sure they fit, because this is the really important part, otherwise it won't look that great at the end. So now we're ready to scratch into the top of it, and I'm actually going to get my thumb through here, because that's going to give some support when writing. So I'm gonna grab my scratchy tool, and you can actually think of anything you want to say on it, but I'm going to put fine gold. That's good, all fits on. You'll notice that there's lots of flakes of clay coming up to the top. You might get a little bit of water on your finger just to smooth out the edges. And we're going to go back in again just to make it a little bit deeper so that when we paint it, you can still see the outline of the letters and the paint doesn't just fill up the holes. Now I'm just going to do the exact same thing to the second half. I might do some numbers this time and make the bar of gold look legit. So as soon as we've finished writing into the clay, I'm once again going to put them together and this is the final step. It's really important that before they dry, we have exactly the shape that we want. So I'm going to press the ends together and you can see that they're coming together again. So it looks like it's one continuous bar without it being cut in between. So now we're just going to put that outside in a really sunny spot and wait for it to dry all day. And then later on, we're going to paint it and fill it with our liquid gold.
This one's nice and folded. STEAM is the way that we embed the arts into science, technology, engineering and maths. Katie, Looking at how all those subjects combine, and where are the intersections, and what can we do that's fun with that. And who else had the inverse one? Did you, Jake? I run a little yeah. club every Tuesday, which is called the Steampunks, and they like to make stuff. They like to explore how things are made. They like to understand the design process, the backstory to the things that they make. We make all sorts of things from electronic wearables, things that whir and move around. We also make things that light up on sensors. We get in the workshop and cut things up. Just a whole range of kind of integrated technologies into some traditional technologies. Anything that's new is a challenge and it's really wonderful to see young people rising to that challenge rather than giving up before they've started. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut both of your laser um, maze files out of yep. this piece of acrylic. We've had many students that have uh, come through these programs that are now engineers, architects, designers, nice. artists, yes. so musicians, environmental scientists, people working in all fields of the arts. I think there's a little bit of um, art and design in just about everything. There's Definitely like something to be said for just sitting and drawing, traditionally painting, beautiful uh, contemplative skills. But the same thing is if you like to create art through digital means, that's also a wonderful skill. I would encourage that sort of exploration so that these areas of knowledge aren't always kept separate. Because in my mind and in my experience, they're all integrated. They are intersections visible in the world. My name's Melissa Silk and I run the Steampunks. On the tip of Battalong Point sits a magnificent white sails of the Sydney Opera House. It has been described as a creative masterpiece and a great urban sculpture. What many people don't know is it all began with a competition. Yep, people from all around the world sent in their ideas, drawings and designs for what they thought the Sydney Opera House should look like. Then, a panel of judges picked the one they thought looked the best. And a man called Jörn Jutzen won his design. One thousand rooms, 16 years to build, and more than a million tiles sit on top of that roof. Such a large structure sitting out there on that point, the designers had to be very conscious because that structure was going to be seen from all sides. The shell-like roof was actually based on a sphere, kind of like an orange, and you can cut the three-sided segments out of the peel. Yutsum was inspired by the nature all around him, from the colours, the rocks in the harbour, birds' wings, and even the little patterns on the back of leaves. It just shows you art is everywhere. Okay guys, so I've just brought in my bar of gold. It's been outside all day drying and now it's time to paint it. So I'm gonna get this really dark bronzy gold because I think that would look really nice to paint it all. And I'm gonna squirt some out on my baking paper. Get your paintbrush. Paint all over. Now we're just going to focus on painting the sides and the top for now. We're going to leave the bottom because once the top's dry, we're then going to turn it over and paint the bottom. Paint all the way around there. Now on to painting the second half, just like you did with the other half. We're just going to leave it for about 10 minutes or until it's touch dry. And 
we can go right ahead painting inside. So now the top of it's dry, we're able to just rest it on the bench while we paint underneath. OK, I'm really happy with that. Now it's just time to set them aside for about 10 minutes while the paint dries, and that gives us plenty of time to make our liquid gold. All we're going to need now is our bowl, our glue, liquid starch, gold paints, measuring cups, and a spoon to stir. So I'm just going to measure out a quarter of a cup of glue. And we want to be super careful that we get just to the top and pour that in the bowl. Then I'm going to take two different kinds of gold paint here because I'm just going to mix up my own kind of gold colour. So I'm going to do a little squirt of this one and then just a squirt of this one as well. Then take your spoon and give it a stir. And then once all the gold paint is mixed in with that glue, we're going to add our liquid starch. We're going to do a full half cup of liquid starch, but add it in really slowly. So I'm going to measure it out and then mixing and stirring it slowly. And you'll start to see instantly how the glue just starts to go really slimy as soon as the liquid starch hits it. It's looking really good. <laughs> and I'm just going to add the rest of that in and mix it all together. And we want to get it all off the sides as well because we want all that gold glue to be mixed in. And you can see, the faster you mix, the more it'll all mould together. So now you don't even need the spoon and you're going to use your fingers to mix it together. There we go. And I think it's looking really good right now. <laughs> Super slimy, which is exactly what we want. So now we're just going to keep on playing with it and you will find that after about 10 minutes, it's going to be even better. The more you play with it and mix it and use your fingers, the better our liquid gold is going to get. Our liquid gold is looking perfect and don't worry, if it does stick to your fingers, you can just easily wipe it off and use some of it to get other bits of it off. Liquid gold is ready and our bar of gold is dry. Now it's time to put them together. So we're just going to grab a little bit of our liquid gold because we've actually made way more than will even fit inside the bar. But that's good, we have heaps to play with later. We're gonna grab some, ah, work quickly and try and fill it up. It's going to ooze everywhere, but that's half the fun of it. Got to scrape up all our slimy gold and put it in the hole there. Now we're just going to do the same to the other side. Might even need a little bit more to make it extra full because we really want it to ooze out when we separate them. That's looking good. And then clean up the edges all the way around just so the liquid hasn't yet spilt all over the sides. And now both our bars are filled up with liquid gold. It's time to put them together and hear that squelch. And then... There you have it, liquid gold. And you can put it together and apart as many times as you like. It gets slimier every time. first thing that comes to your mind? Is it candle wax? Bees wax? Ear wax? Look, my friend, she's a little camera shy. But today I'm going to meet up with my friend Zoe, who is going to show us a thing or two about what you can do with wax and how to immortalise my hair. Bye! Hi, how are you? I'm well. 
thought, what are you doing here? So we're just um, maintaining Katy Perry. We have lots of guests here at Madame Tussauds Sydney and they all want to get up close and personal with their favourite figures. They will give them a cuddle and play with their hair so for us it's, um, it's quite hard work to keep them looking as beautiful and fresh every day. So do the celebrities sit and pose like you would a painting or do you use photographs? Uh, well when we meet with the celebrity we ask them how they would like to be seen when they're in the attraction. So Katie, you know, she got in her pose, yeah. chose the pose, and then uh, she'll stand like that for four hours. We take over 250 measurements of them, and we take photos from all angles. We also take colour matches of her skin and her hair, her eye colour, and the makeup that she was wearing for her concert. When we are actually making the sculpture of them, everything is done to the exact right size. The hair. It looks yeah. so real, is it? Can I touch it? Yeah, oh. absolutely. Wow. It is real human hair. Real human hair. Yeah. It's ethically sourced hair and it's inserted into the head one by one. Wow. So how long does it take to make the whole wax figure? It takes about four months to make the figure yeah. from the research phase wow. right through to the finished product. Wow. Well, I think my hand is ready to join the legion of the celebrity moles. Uh, my friend Angela is from the Wax Hand area. Yeah, okay. go and get one. All right, see, see you. you. Bye. Angela, hey, hey. Zoe sent me over. So how do we start? So first thing, uh, what we do is we just cool your hand down and relax it in this cold water oh. here. <laughs> what we're doing is cooling your hand down so that when it reaches the wax for the first layer, it's not too hot for you. So what I'll get you to do is bring your hand out and just spread them out like this. Yeah. And what we'll do is create a barrier between um, your skin and the wax. That way it helps it slide out of you. So that looks yeah. good. This is the hot wax here. <laughs> So three, two, one, one ready down. for the oh, okay. Straight back in here. Oh, that feels right. nice. So we'll go down. Oh. We're going to do three dips back right. into the wax. And one last dip. And back to the water. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. It's a strange feeling, isn't it? It is. How hot is this wax? Um, so we normally keep it between 60 and 65 degrees. Right now it's about 63. Wow, this is really hot wax. And Angela is a trained professional, so don't try this at home. Okay, so last layer, we're going to leave it in for five seconds. Okay, so we're holding it for longer. Yep. So I'll bring that down. One, two, three, four, five. So what I'm going to do here is open up the wrist area, try and get some air to go all the way down to the bottom, and then it'll kind of slide out like a glove, except that it keeps its shape. Very good. And flip it over. And bring that out. All right. Is my hand really that big? So what I'm going to do now is just to make this nice and straight, I'm just going to melt the bottom into the wax. It goes soft here, that way I can tuck it in and it's nice and neat. Wow. The wax acts like a glue. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go dip the entire hand all the way in. Where the magic happens <laughs> in the water. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay, so there we have your hand, Sandra, finished in wax. Thank you so much, Angela. This looks so cool. Just goes to show you can get arty with wax. <laughs>